Good evening and thank you for joining me on this Ash Wednesday. So Ash Wednesday is the beginning of uh, Lent which goes on for 40 days and 40 nights and is the journey that leads up to Easter. So traditionally people would uh, give up things or perhaps take on something new during this 40 day period. I don't know what you'd like to do, but um, it's always good, I think, just to do something that's slightly different. Most people will give up something and then labour themselves under uh, the burden which they've placed upon themselves as they move through Lent. And as you'll see in tonight's reading, that's not what God wants of us at all. So perhaps you might like to take on something a little bit different. Perhaps you might like to try something new. Perhaps you might like to take a little bit of extra time just meditating or just stopping and pausing and thinking during this Lenten time. However you want to do that, tonight is the start and it's a start with the service of Ashing, hence the name Ash Wednesday. I hope that you've got a copy of the order of service or that you uh, can have downloaded one. Um, if not, you can join in with the bits that you know. We gather in the dimness of evening to be with the God who brightens the shadows of our lives. We gather in the quiet of this place to be with Jesus, knowing that nothing past, present or future separates us. We gather to be marked as disciples, to be fed for the journey through Lent, to be sealed by the Spirit as God's own. So you may like to find yourself some ashes. The traditional way of uh, making ashes would be to take the palm crosses that were um, given out last year um, and uh, just to burn them, obviously very carefully taking care. But any ash will do. Uh, you'll need your ashes later on. You wait this evening, patient God, for us to come back, to stop going away from you. On our self-focused travels, to set aside our empty fears, to cease shaping you in our image, so we can discover you closer than we ever dared imagine. You wait for us this night, companion of our hearts, for us to follow once more, leaving the shuttered corners of our lives Refusing to go from one failed promise to another, coming out of the panic rooms we have built in our souls. So you can take us by the hand to lead us to the resurrection life. You wait in scattered ashes of our lives, spirit of silence, for us to find you. In the broken bread, which strengthens us to serve, in the cup of grace which fills our emptiness, in our sisters and brothers who are willing to hold us up when we falter, so you can embrace us with joy and hope in every moment, as you wait and as we seek to return to you in these moments, we pray as we are taught. So the two readings this evening, the first one comes from Psalm 51, and I'm reading the uh, interpretation um, entitled The Utter Mercy of God, which is by Jim Cotter. Enfold me in your love, dear God, yet pierce my heart with your mercy. And the cascading of your compassion scour away all that offends. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. My failure weighs heavy on my heart, my sin confronts me at the turning of the road. Against you alone have I sinned, my beloved, doing what is evil and causing more harm. In the eyes of my victims your judgment is clear, there is nothing I can claim in your presence. I was formed in the midst of a world gone wrong, from the moment of my conceiving. I breathed my ancestors' sin. The truths to which I am blind are hidden so deep, so secretly, bringing the light of your wisdom to the depths of the heart. 
Bathe me in water that is fresh from the spring. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the bones which you have broken may dance again. Turn your face from my twists and deceits, blot out all my misdeeds. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the comfort of your help again, and strengthen me with your courage and hope. Then I shall teach your ways to those around me, and others will be converted to your path. Deliver us all from guilt of bloodshed, O God, for you are the God of the world that is coming. In health and truth we shall sing of your justice. When you open our lips, O God, our mouths shall sing your praise. For you desire no animal sacrifice, no formal gift out of mere duty. You do not delight in burnt offerings. Nothing from our wealth can buy your favour. The sacrifice you ask is a troubled spirit. It is my pride that must yield. My broken and contrite heart I bring, so foolish, self-centred and vain. And yet it is all that I have. Even this gift you will not despise, for I hear again that you yearn for me with a love I can barely imagine. So do I give you the whole of myself, dependent as I am on the gift of your mercy. So may my giving to others be free of the motives of power, gifts to overwhelm or appease. May my heart be a spontaneous giving, spreading delight and mutual embrace. Such is the way of the city of peace, whose walls you call us to build. Take us to yourself, compassionate God. Were you hurt so much in the depths of our being, caught up in the pain of life, and so often inflicted, yet more so on others? Embrace us with the hands that show still the marks of nails, your love swallowing up all our sin and pride. So we pray that broken bones may you in the dance of Jesus our Redeemer. And to listen to one of those great gifts that we were given or continue to be given from St Martin of the Fields at the uh, hymns and worship songs that they've been doing. And this evening I thought it would be appropriate to have the Lord's My Shepherd and to listen to the Stuart Townend version. So this was previously recorded.
So the reading is uh, from Luke 18, chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. So Jesus is speaking to his disciples. He also told this parable to some who trust in themselves, that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but those who humble themselves will be exalted. So we pray as we have been taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the power, the kingdom and the glory are yours, now and for ever. So... You have a few more moments and you have one more song to go and uh, find some ashes if you haven't got any. But we're going to enter the invitation to join the Lenten life. Not for the first time, yet fresh once more, we accompany Jesus to Jerusalem. Because of his experience in the wilderness, we discover how we might have the strength to turn our back on evil so we can choose good. By his example of fasting and prayer, in the midst of serving and caring for others, we can learn that the rhythm of faithful living, which allows us to work for justice and hope, as we draw strength from the timeless act of silence, feasting on the word and on prayer. As we remember our baptism into faith, as we gather at the Feast of Grace, as we are marked as Christ's own, we prepare ourselves to come to God on this holy night. So uh, some of you might have heard earlier on the story that I told about the getting of the ashes when I was curious. Um, and uh, sorry if it's a, a repetition, um, but um, I, I learned of this, this uh, thing about having ashes and the ashes coming from uh, the, the, the palm crosses of the year before. And my training combat was very good. He was called Edward, Edward Cardell, and he, he was great. And he taught me a lot. He, he, he told me about the ashes. And I said to him, how do you prepare the ashes? And he said, that's something that each uh, priest has to work out for themselves. They all have their own recipe. So, um, but you need some ashes. And then he explained to me that, that uh, you collect up the crosses that were given out on Palm Sunday, and then, then they're, they're brought back. Uh, and then they're burned collectively and that comes into the ashes. And he says it's really good because the uh, the palm crosses make very fine ash. What you don't want is you don't want ash that's gritty because you're going to put it on your going to put it on people's foreheads and you don't want it to be scratchy. So it makes a very fine ash. And so uh, that day, uh, it was, uh, I think it was a couple of days actually before um, Ash Wednesday, I was taking home communion out and I took this this uh, elderly lady. Now I have to tell you that I'd already had a few difficulties with this lady because I was told that if she was very superstitious, and this, for a Christian to be very superstitious, it was interesting. She, and so I was told that uh, I should never go uh, out of the same door that I came in. So you, you would go, you would knock on the front door and she'd tell you to come in and you'd go in and then when you went, you had to go out, out the back door. And he said she has a very, very strict hierarchy of um, who gets what when you visit. So he said to me, as a curate, you'll be offered a glass of sherry. 
Um, so I said, Sherry, and he said, yes. I said, well, what do you get? He said, oh, he said, oh, I get offered a glass of port. And uh, he said that when the doctor goes, the doctor gets offered a glass, well, uh, you know, you know, not a glass, but, a, you know, a, a shot of whiskey. And so she had this very strong tea spit, so you can you know, take it, it's not, or not. So uh, I went in and I said, actually, I'm not drinking at the moment. And so she offered to make me some tea. And I said, yes, please. So she made the tea. And um, I, I, what you can see, I mean, my hounds are, are massive. But she brought the tea in a bone china cup and saucer. Um, she came in with a trolley and she poured the tea and she said, you want lemon or milk? And I said, I'll oh, have milk, please. And she sort of didn't quite, you know, touch. But um, she slightly rolled her eyes. And uh, so she gave me this cup and I, and I put, and she was telling me about this china, and she said, you know, that uh, obviously, you know, the vicar or one of the sort of minor vicars had arrived. So she got the sort of second best china. out, And as I put my finger through... The, the 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 handle my finger got stuck and and as I pulled it out I pulled the handle off the cup and I was so traumatized by that I'd already given a communion I was so traumatized by that that, that, that I I just made my excuses and left um, and went out of the front door instead of going out of the back door so she, she she wasn't always very happy to see me and but I thought well I'll take this story about the about the crosses too because that'll be a good good little sort of story to tell her and I went into the house and um, I, I told a story about how you know this is this is what happened it made fine ash and all this stuff and as I was doing this I looked up and around the uh, the the picture rail must have been 70 or 80 crosses and it was very clear she'd been collecting these crosses uh, for <laughs> for years and now here was this you know sort of whippersnapper curate who'd come along and wanted to take those <laughs> take all her crosses away and burn them well i can tell you she didn't give them to me and uh, it was the last time that i ever uh, took communion to her uh, edward said that she would prefer to see somebody else so for my sins i never never i never went back back to uh, to see her the funny thing was was when i i talked to the family uh, at her, her um at her funeral um she died some some years later and um edward edward i think probably took the funeral somebody took it not I, I wasn't taking it but i was talking to the family and i told them this story and they said that's 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 there's more truth in that story about mother than there was in the um uh in the, the whole of the rest of the um the whole of the rest of the the, the eulogy <laughs> so shall we just take a moment's pause again and uh, sing take this moment Take my talents 
to be Let my life be yours And yet let it still be me On this night we begin our journey to Easter before we can take the first step, we must admit how we have not been faithful to our God. So let us pray, together saying, We have trouble telling the truth, God of broken hearts. Yet we must admit on this night how we have troubled beings, your people. We, we may not trample not poor, but sometimes we walk right past them. We don't receive bribes, but we are more privileged than many around us. We trust more in ourselves than in you, and spend far too much time contemplating ourselves, time patting ourselves on the back rather than holding out our hand to others. Where can we go for forgiveness but to you, God of the ashes? When we are greedy, you promise to be gracious. When we have troubled confronting injustice, you stand by our side. When we struggle to seek God, you point us to Jesus, our brother, our saviour, who shows us how to turn our back on evil, to follow him. Amen. God refuses to stand far off comes close to us to hear our prayers, to touch our hearts with forgiveness and to walk with us during this holy season and beyond. We have no need to go any place else but into the comforting and restoring heart of the one who loves us. Thanks be to God. Just yesterday it seemed the palms were fresh and green, held tight in hands, as we reenacted Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. But then they dried, shriveled, became almost too fragile to touch, until we burned them into the ashes for tonight. Yet by the grace of our God, with the Spirit resting upon them, they are mixed with oil and placed on our foreheads, or palms of our hand, the dust of life resting upon us, as a sign that by sharing the gifts of peace, reconciliation, justice and generosity, we will live into the people we long to become. God of all moments, touch us with the ashes of repentance. Mark us with your forgiveness and grace. So this is where you can use your ashes. Traditionally, ashes would make the sign of the cross on your forehead. You would say, from ash you have come, to ash you will return. Turn away from sin and follow Christ. And so as we contemplate that and think back to the time when another cross was made on our forehead, a cross made with oil and our baptism, the beginning of our Christian life and all the times that we've had ashes placed upon our heads as we grew up, as we were adults, as we grew older. May we think about what we have, what we not others don't have, when enough is enough. And may we think about that hole in our hearts that, as Augustine reminds us, only God can fill. Smudge this night with the ashes of penitence. We will go out to share God's forgiveness with those we have hurt, with those who are forgotten. Fed this night by the host of the Feast of Grace, we will go out and bring healing to the broken, to offer grace to those trampled by the powerful. Called this night to journey through suffering to new life, we will go out 
to stand with those expect, experiencing injustice, to share the Spirit's peace and reconciliation with the world.